Welcome to Goobertown Hobbies. My name is Brent. Normally, we talk about painting minis, but today we're going to talk about designing minis. This set of figures here in front of me were designed by me. Sort of. I had the idea for the set and for a lot of the characters in here, and then I worked with some professionals to get this done. The process of going from brainstorm to figurine was fascinating. There was so much creativity involved, and I think it makes for a great story. So today, we have a behind-the-scenes look at how new minis get made. So my partners on this are Titan Forge. I like what they do, they like what I do, so we set up this collaboration. This is a small Polish company with a handful of employees. These guys have been designing and casting and selling figures since 2012. Recently, they've pivoted to become leaders in the new craze of 3D printed minis. Personally, as a consumer, I've been having a ton of fun printing my own minis, so it's awesome to build this relationship and get to understand where these minis are coming from. I was planning on hanging out with the Titan Forge guys at Adepticon this year, but alas, this is the year of coronavirus. So instead of b-roll footage of us handsome men hanging out in person, please enjoy this alternate footage. So the business model here for Titan Forge is a Patreon subscription for monthly releases of minis. They're distributed as digital STL files. Every month, they're designing and sculpting a new set of minis. Previous sets have had names like Dragon Empire, Demonic Kingdom, and Cyberpunk. Titan Forge is one of several companies out there trying to make this business model work. To stay competitive, they've got to keep pumping out high-quality models. They've got to make their sets eye-catching to attract new subscribers, and of course, they're working social media to get out the good word. That's why they let me tag along. So we came up with a cool way to work together. I'd feed them some awesome ideas for a month's worth of minis, and in return, these professionals would make my ideas come to life. And now, here I am with a collection of minis that I designed. Well, minis that I thought up at least. Sort of. Obviously, I don't have the insane artistic talent of these folks, but the rough ideas did come from me. And then Titan Forge turned them into something awesome. So the rhythm for these monthly set releases is for the Titan Forge subscribers to vote on what they want the next set to be. Demons? Dwarves? Cyberpunk? What does the community want next? In order to rig this part of the game, I came up with four different set ideas. No matter what the subscribers voted for, they'd be voting for a set of minis that I wanted to see brought to life. At this early phase, I was batting ideas around with the guys at Titan Forge. Especially Slavik, who does a lot of the character sculpting, and Roman, who makes sure that the business side of this all works out okay. We needed to make sure that the artists were excited and inspired to work on these various ideas, and we needed to make sure that the ideas wouldn't be so lame that they'd tank the company. We were looking for sets with broad appeal that people would be itching to print out and get some use out of. We were also thinking about individual models and centerpieces that'll grab attention, show off what these artists can do, and get customers hooked. For example, my idea for a set of frightened villagers got vetoed. Fair enough, fair enough. Someday I'll get my hands on more panicked villagers like Johan here. I'm a patient man, I can wait. I did have a lot of ideas that we all got excited about though. I was wishlisting models that I thought the world could use more of. When the guys in Poland thought that a concept was good enough for a cool set, I wrote up a little synopsis. We kept brainstorming until we had four pretty cool set themes. So here are the four choices that we gave to the patrons to vote on. I'm going to read the spiels that I wrote to try to get people to vote for each of these. Go ahead, close your eyes, imagine the possibilities, and think about which of these four sets you would have voted for. Set 1, Barbarians vs. Yetis. In the frozen north, hard men and women fight to protect their homelands from the monsters who dwell there. Warm caves and fresh mammoth meat are in short supply. The proud human tribes are in a constant struggle with the brutal yeti clans. Warriors demonstrate bravery and strength by collecting the heads of these beasts, the larger the better. The powerful yetis collect the bones of humans as well, once they're done gnawing on them. Dangerous though they are, yetis aren't the worst things lurking in the wilds. Expect beastly humans, beastlier yetis, and some truly monstrous creatures from the frozen lands. Set Option 2, Pit Fighters Ludus. Important days are marked by fights in the arena. 
Warriors and beasts come from all over the Empire to entertain the crowds. Some are brought to the arena in chains, while others come for coin, for pride, or a sense of destiny. All manner of humans have been seen taking up the weapons of the arena, but the crowd cheers all the louder when one of the rarer folk of the world face death upon the sands. Some in the crowd love to see a close contest between skilled opponents. Others will bet heavily on the most ridiculous of matchups. Some patricians will sponsor veteran fighters with dozens of victories, while others will put their stock in quantity over quality. Yet others will pay handsomely to bring novelties and true monsters to the arena. Expect warriors of various races and mythical beasts who will fight and die to the roar of the crowd. Option 3. Town of Dark Secrets Why does the barmaid never work on the full moon? Why was the blacksmith seen walking into the forest with hunks of meat? What are those sounds coming from the crofter's house at night? Did the miller always have those strange tattoos? And why does he look so exhausted? Why do cats hiss at the stable boy? Who was the hooded woman seen walking the streets? Why did that caravan pass through town in the dead of night? And why did it stop at the nobleman's estate? Why does the cooper look so nervous? And why did he put all those locks on his door? Has anyone seen the Wainwright recently? Expect characters who appear to be ordinary townsfolk, aside from a few tiny details. Expect some townsfolk who look a bit out of the ordinary, some special village terrain with hidden doors, some frightened villagers, and some very big secrets with claws. Set choice number four, battle mages and spellblades. Just because you know some magic doesn't mean that you wear a robe, carry a stick, and sit in a tower. Some magicians know how to get stuff done on the battlefield. Heavy armor, strong sword arms, exploding potions, ensorcelled weapons, and vicious familiars are all part of what make this diverse sect of mages such powerful warriors. They may all have different magical gifts and different preferred weapons, but they are all extraordinarily dangerous. Expect warriors from many distant lands and many schools of magic. Expect a brutal assortment of fighting styles and some very large and deadly familiars. Before we started voting, we truly didn't know which of these would win. On Patreon, folks can leave comments when they vote, so it was interesting to see what people were excited about and why. I'm a patron of Titanforge myself, and I voted for Yetis and Barbarians. I mean, I wanted all of the sets, but I was just a bit more in the mood for Yetis vs Barbarians on that day. The real contest ended up being between the Town of Dark Secrets and Battle Mages. The comments on the poll showed a lot of people who were ready to put some townsfolk NPCs to good use. First, a lot of people who were excited to see what awesome player characters might be lurking in the Battle Mage set. Before the poll closed, we could see that the Battle Mages were gonna win so we had to figure out what was actually going to go into the set. A standard monthly release is about 12 figures, so that's the roster size that we were playing with here. Roman wanted to make sure that at least two or three were big, eye-catching pieces to make the set easy to hype up. Stuff like mounts, familiars, golems, were creatures, those are all fair game. So let's take a step back here and talk about what I had in mind for this battle mage set. I've thought for years that this trope needed more representation in media and games. The biggest initial inspiration for me was probably the Elder Scroll games. There aren't really classes in those games, you just go out into the world, do stuff, and you eventually learn whatever skills you want. Even if you want to be a mage type character, it's still pretty useful to have some plate armor and a sword. So many representations of magic users are based off of Merlin and Gandalf, frail folks in robes. Lots of games have a class system where robes and walking sticks are imposed on the magicians, and they're pretty much just handicaps to balance them against the fighter classes. A mage with a fireball in one hand and a longsword in the other is just so cool though. There's a decent bit of fantasy art out there in the battle mage or spellblade tropes, but we wanted more, especially in the realm of minis. Mages who fight. We went all out with some brainstorm sessions. The Titan Forge guys are from Poland. I don't know many people from Poland, but we connected instantly when it came to talking about fantasy tropes. These guys have seen at least as many movies and TV shows as I have, we've read a lot of the same books, and we've played a lot of the same games. Of course, being from Poland, they're especially familiar with The Witcher. 
which is pretty good source material for battle mages. We were able to communicate really efficiently in nerd shorthand. Barbarians like the expansion set to Diablo 2? Yeah. Pit fighters like in the Elder Scrolls 4? Yeah. Beefy assassin mages like that one cutscene in The Witcher 2? Yeah. Battle Gandalf? Oh yeah. Actually, Gandalf the White is halfway to a battle mage already. He doesn't have cool armor, but he does have an awesome sword, and he does use it to murder a large number of orcs when he's hanging out with Pippin on the walls of Minas Tirith. Anyway, we got to talking about all the different tropes of magic users. Necromancers, warlocks, wizards, sorcerers, mages, druids, fire, frost, arcane, so much magic. We ended up cobbling together a rough draft of the set list that looked a bit like this. Now, when you actually pencil in ideas for 12 minis, the roster fills up fast. The trick is to rebalance this list to make a well-rounded set that has a bunch of cool stuff in there. We want the set to have a strong theme, and we also want something for everyone. Now somewhere around this time, Slavik shared this image with me. He said that it was just something he'd been playing around with on his own long before we thought up this set of minis. This guy is absolutely ridiculous. I think that I detected just a bit of bashfulness from Slavic when he shared it. But obviously, this guy is going into the set. Axe Gandalf is definitely a battle mage. I don't think he ever would have sprung from my mind, but this guy is awesome. If Axe Gandalf doesn't go in this set, what set would he ever belong in? Axe Gandalf definitely makes the cut. And somewhere around this point, I had a really fun idea for the overall set. Instead of pulling magic types from all fantasy worlds ever created, why not use the magic types from Magic the Gathering? Daniel especially perked right up at that. I've only recently started getting into magic cards myself, but it has a really great 5 color system for classifying character types, creature types, and spell types. 5 colors of magic, 12 minis, Let's see if we can design two or three models for each color. With this five color framework in mind, the set came together really fast. The last time I talked about magic cards in a video, I got chided for not talking about the colors in the correct order. Live and learn. Let's start from the top. White characters are about society and law. They look out for the group. White has soldiers and knights. Birds, angels, and griffins tend to be white creature types. So for white characters, we made these high society battle mages. You can imagine them leading an army. They're noble and fancy and just a bit vanilla. For these fighters, Titanforge actually contracted out some cool concept art. This concept art is from Igor Harris. They look good in 2D and they came out great in 3D. With world events right now, sending international packages from Poland isn't easy. Roman had a moment of panic about being able to get me a set of these minis. Luckily, I can print minis right here at home. The rapid turnaround time between concept art and printing minis here on the other side of the world is still mind-boggling to me. Recently, Elegoo sent me an Elegoo Mars resin printer to test out, so I put it to work on these battle mages. This here isn't sponsored, but I will say that the printer they sent is intuitive, it seems well built, and it seems to do its job well. I'm still gaining experience with these resin printers, and someday I'll talk about them in much more detail. For now though, I'll drop some Elegoo links in the description, and I'll leave you with the knowledge that so far my experience has been positive. All of the physical minis that I'm showing in this video were printed on my Elegoo Mars, and for an affordable instrument like this, the quality is pretty good. Oh my, look at those highly detailed resin wings! One of the minis that Slavik and Roman were excited about making was a big centerpiece model on a mount. Slavik kept talking about a griffin, and to be honest, I thought he was crazy. I've seen a lot of super lame griffin minis out there. But then they showed me this, and I understood. Okay, yeah, griffins can be cool. Obviously you should make a battle mage like that. Slavic sculpted this griffin knight about 8 years ago, back when he sculpted these things by hand. This was one of the first ever Titan Forge minis. In a bit of a good news, bad news situation, Slavic had to spend a bit of time in the hospital for chemo a few years back. He made the most of it though, and while he was in the hospital, he taught himself to use ZBrush. Nowadays, he does most of his sculpting with ZBrush, and he's a wizard at it. Slavic thinks that his experience doing physical sculpture has really improved his ability to do computer design. On a big screen, it's possible to zoom way in on one of these figures and to lose all sense of scale. 
And then, when you print the figure out one inch tall, none of the details look the way that you expect them to. Slawik's experience doing things the old way helps him to know what size the details need to be, how accented to make the facial expressions, and how deep to make creases. When these minis get printed off, all the elements register how we want them to. The tiny details are just the right size to actually print and paint nicely. I'm sorry that I ever doubted you and your griffin. This is awesome. This mini fits right in with the other white mages. Maybe she's the general of the army, and the other white mages are her lieutenants. Next up, blue. The color of intellect. Knowledge is power. Blue characters learn spells and secrets to give themselves an upper hand. Here we have a desert mage. She's a bit of a tomb raider who sought out scrolls and artifacts to give herself great power. This mage was something that we'd been talking about from the very beginning. She works so well as a blue character type. It's just a matter of giving her a few scrolls and potions and artifacts on her belt. And if you look, she's got a lamp there too. She has a powerful djinn at her command. I was a bit hesitant about the djinn at first too. In my head, I was thinking about the Robin Williams Aladdin genie with that wispy magic tail. In a bit of collaborative problem solving, we nixed the tail and we came up with this empty skirt design. This is awesome. In the magic card game, djinn are definitely blue creature types, so this all works out really well. This particular djinn looks like he might have some anger problems though. Like all of us, he might have a bit of red in him. Axe Gandalf might be a blue character too. He gives the vibe of being a hermit, sitting in his hut, smoking his pipe, reading his books, pondering life. He's also a bit of a woodsman though, so there might be a green influence. Maybe even just a bit of white with that knight armor. What a silly model this guy is, but I'm really glad that he's in the set. Next up, black. Self-interest, a lack of morals, and a general willingness to do despicable things in pursuit of getting what you want. At first, we talked about a necromancer and a flesh golem Frankenstein creature. But nah. In season 1 of the Witcher TV show, there's a magical assassin character who has a frightening pet insect that does his dirty work for him. We were really inspired by that, so the guys at Titanforge contracted out another independent concept artist. Rodrigo Balmaceda came up with this concept art for a spooky looking mantis bug. I love this. As a 3D print file, Titanforge broke this down into classic insect bits. Six legs, two claws, head, thorax, abdomen. I got these files before the rest of the world saw them, and before I myself saw a reference image for the assembled figure. You should have seen me guessing at which leg went where. I don't know if I got it quite right, but I ended up with something awesome and spooky and I'm excited to get it painted. For real though, it was such a crazy cool experience to get these files and these minis ahead of the world. I was probably the first person to print all these models, and almost certainly the first person to paint some of them. And for the Black Battle Mage? Of course, we're gonna go with a Dark Elf Warlock character. A mean Lady Dark Elf? Oh yeah, that's the stuff. The world always needs more Dark Elves. If an opportunity arises to talk a talented artist into making more Dark Elves, well, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Like all the rest of our battle mages, we made sure that she had awesome armor and weaponry that'll get stuff done on the battlefield. Next up, red. The color of passion and action. If you're feeling an emotion, that means you've gotta let it out. In the card game, that emotion is normally rage. The gameplay for red decks has a lot of direct damage spells. Lightning bolts, fireballs, stuff like that. So we've got a big passionate man here in the act of hurling a flaming javelin. Oh yes, this will do nicely. Something kinda cool about the way that Slavic works is that he doesn't draw concept art for himself. If he has an idea in his head, the fastest way for him to bring it to life is to start working his magic in ZBrush. It's really awesome for a layperson like myself to see the way that these basic shapes start turning into these digital works of art, straight from the imagination to the screen. And almost as soon as Slavic has that mini on his screen, I can start printing it out at home. What a wild and crazy world we live in. On the red battle mage here, we went with a flaming spear. The symbolism for red type magical damage is perfect. So we'd fallen into a bit of a habit of giving each mage a pet or a familiar, so this guy got a tiger. I know, I know, tigers are normally printed in green, 
but they have been printed in red before. It works, it works. One of these days, I'll even learn how to paint tiger stripes. Sadly, that day is still in the future. When we were making this set, we had no idea that it would drop right after Netflix introduced us all to Joe Exotic. Have fun printing and painting tigers, everyone! By the way, can you imagine if Joe Exotic turned his mullet into a mohawk and played with fire even more often? That's something to think about right there. Last but not least, green. Green is the color of nature and balance. Things are as they were meant to be, and we should accept our place in the world. Unless someone tries to mess with us. In that case, nature rises up and it has big claws. I told you earlier that I was really interested in a set of Barbarian vs. Yeti minis. Well, Titan Forge gave me a bit of a present here. We've got a Barbarian Druid of the Wilds and a Beastly Yeti. Slavik came up with his own variant of the Yeti creature design that I really like. He used an angry baboon face as reference for this monster. Baboons can be absolutely frightening with those teeth of theirs. Especially when they're 500 pounds and they come charging at you out of the winter forest. The way these two green figures are sculpted, they could be enemies. Or the druid may be able to shift into yeti form. If you look closely, both of them have injuries to the right eye. An interesting little detail. Is our druid here a secret wear yeti? Or maybe it's a coincidence and he hunts yetis. Maybe that's why he has some horns strapped over his shoulders. Like all the models in this set, there's lots of fun ways that you could use these minis. Now, I said that there were going to be 12 minis on this roster, but I lied. There are actually 13. As a finale, we have a wizard's apprentice. Like any good apprentice, he does the grunt work, hauling books around, fetching reagents, and defending the tower. This was another mini based on concept art from Igor, and I really like it. The soft adolescent face is definitely a different look from the rest of the set. I think this character would fit perfectly on the cover of some young adult novel. All those books that he's carrying make him look like he might be a blue character, but then again, we all know it wasn't his choice to be hauling those books around. This is a great little mini who could be used as an apprentice to almost any of the other mages. It'd actually be really funny if this poor little guy had to follow around the angry red mage or the dark elf sorceress. I think Slavik and I could have happily kept making apprentices, but hey, that's all the characters we were able to make for this set. Titan Forge has been known to make sequel sets in the past though, so who knows what could happen. Maybe an all apprentice set is in the future. Then again, maybe not. Of course, while Slavik was making characters, Daniel was hard at work making bases and terrain for this set. I was less involved with this side of things, but it all looks really cool and I'm excited to get it printed and painted. Zooming out again, I am really proud of this set. I think it's great. There's a lot of awesome figures in here that are fun to paint. There's a good variety of stuff, and I'm sure that people running RPGs will find a ton of uses for these characters. I think it's so cool that companies like Titan Forge are able to pump out sets of models like this every month. It's a great business model where painters and gamers like us get new minis to print on a regular schedule, and the artists get a steady paycheck for putting their talent and creativity to use. Titan Forge has been designing and selling models for 8 years now, but it's only been in the last year or so that they've embraced the market for 3D printed minis. The world of 3D printed minis is expanding really fast, and it's exciting to be a part of it. It's still amazing to me that these minis were a brainstorm last month, and now they're physical models that I get to paint. The Patreons weren't quite sure what they were voting for when they voted for Battle Mages and Spellblades, but I sincerely hope that everyone finds something in here to keep them busy and entertained until next month's release. Whatever that may be. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little peek behind the curtain here. Apparently this is how new minis get made these days. As for myself, I had a blast. It's just always a joy to work with creative folks who are so good at what they do. I've got my minis all printed out here, and I'm in the middle of painting them. I'm having fun, and there's gonna be a painting video on these on the horizon, so keep your eyes out for that. It's got a really good theme, I think it's gonna be a good one. Anyway, that's all for this time. As always, thank you so much for watching. <laughs>